Hi, I'm Jackie and welcome to My Magical Home, previously known as Hearth and Apron. In today's video, I'm going to be taking you along with me as I prepare for an afternoon on the lake with my kayaks and I cannot wait to show you what I like to take with me to help ensure that my day just goes smooth sailing. So in addition to that, I've also got a checklist down below in the description for you that is completely free. I've got a color version and black and white and that is hopefully to help make sure that your next adventure goes a little bit easier. So. Before we go ahead and get all of that prep started though, I need to head outside and give my kayaks a good clean because this is the first time we've taken them out this year and frankly, they're a little bit mucky because we had some heavy flooding last year and they just have not had the attention that they need. So let's go ahead and head outside real quick and then I will meet you back in here for some more fun. As you can see, we aren't going too crazy with this cleanup. We are just going to use the hose to water off any debris and dirt that might be on the kayaks. Now, I also did rinse the inside of them as well because of that flood water I told you about earlier. I didn't know if any of it had gotten in and I didn't want any nasty surprises. OMG, we found friends. We found two snails on our kayaks as we were cleaning them. And because I'm a dork, obviously I named one. This is Ralph. All right, so here is my checklist. And now these are the items that my family and I find essential for our good time. But obviously things can vary for everyone. And I would love to hear what are the items that you find essential to bring. Don't forget to comment. Now, obviously, some of these items are more important than others, and some of them might seem a little bit of common sense, like tie-downs and life jackets, but I, when I have a checklist, like to have even those common sense items because those are the ones that you seem to forget in the heat of the moment. Um, now, this is available in a color and black and white version if you click the link in the description down below, and I hope that you really like it. Don't forget to let me know what you think. Now that we've gone over that checklist, it is time for me to start packing things up. We're gonna start out with what I put in my first aid kit. I'm also gonna show you what exactly I'm packing for our lunch today. And then after that, it is time to head to the lake. And I cannot wait to share that part with you because I get to show you one of my favorite Arizona kayaking spots. So before I pack everything up, let's talk about what is in my first aid kit. So I have got some cleaning wipes in case somebody gets a cut or some kind of an abrasion to clean them well. In addition to that, I've got these instant cold packs and those are an absolute must for me. Not only for obvious reasons, but also in case you overheat, they can be an absolute lifesaver. So I like to have them on hand all the time. Now these little band-aids here are particularly cool. These are for bites and splinters and that is because they have activated charcoal in them which actually helps to like suck out the splinter or like you know like the stuff from the bite and I thought that was pretty neat. They're also made with bamboo just like the normal band-aids that I have here. Now, these are technically the kids ones and they're infused with coconut oil. They did have adult ones but they didn't have pandas so I mean the choice was obvious. Um, in addition to that, I got some Curoxin, which is a first aid thing, kind of like Neosporin, but it was all natural and organic. And I was trying to like, you know, stock up in like a really nice way. Don't do it. It smells awful. Also, this Bear Republic sunscreen smells great, um, but it does not mist or spray like they claim. It came out like silly string and just kind of made the hugest mess. Don't recommend that one either. Now we did get these like bug um, bracelet things. I felt like it worked for me, but my daughter claims that it did not work at all. So if you guys have ever tried these, let me know what you guys think and if they've worked for you and your family down below. So this part I'm just kind of sharing for fun. I just thought I'd show you what we had for lunch that day and kind of give you an idea of the kind of food that I like to pack. Now I always like to do a nice sandwich for everybody because I feel like that is something that we all go to and it is a really easy thing that you can eat on the lake. Now today I am using provolone, different kinds of salami as well as pepperoni to kind of make I guess like a spicy Italian is I guess what they call it at Subway but in addition to that there is some avocado I put some balsamic vinegar on it and then I have pepperoncinis some deli mustard as well as lettuce and I feel like this is a really tasty sandwich to have on the lake so I thought I would share it with you 
Now, in addition to a sandwich, I like to have one or two crunchy items that you just can kind of reach in and enjoy. So today I have these toasted chips that are sour cream and onion. My daughter absolutely swears by them. She loves them. And I also picked them up each their own bag of Harvest Snaps. Now, those are kind of like these freeze-dried peas. Um, I'm not the biggest fan, but they love them, so I'm always happy to get them for them. Now in addition to that, I have some coconut LaCroix as well as some coconut water that I am packing for everyone today. And then on the side, you don't see it here, but I do pack water. And don't forget to pack liquids when you guys go on the lake. Water is so important because it is so easy to get dehydrated when you're out in the sun on the lake. So make sure, don't forget your beverages. If you haven't seen these bags before, they are so awesome. They're like little dry bags just for your phone. I'm so grateful to have these because then I still get to have the photos and the videos to treasure without worrying about my phone being in the middle of a lake. So now for some of the other items, you can see that in addition to our lunch boxes, we also brought our dry bags with us. And, and they basically help to ensure that all of our goodies stay dry, even if our boat tips over in the middle of the lake. Of course, when they're closed, if you leave them open, you're SOL. Now, in addition to that, we have our cushions for our seats, our paddles, and of course, our life jackets. You know, even if you can swim, it is so important to bring life jackets when on the lake. In fact, it's actually the law where I live. There has to be a life jacket for every person preferably on. Um, I actually do believe that minors have to like have theirs on at all times. And welcome to Fool's Hollow Lake. Now this is part of the Fool's Hollow Recreation Area and it is an Arizona State Park and I love this lake for so many reasons. From its fairly like calm workable waters that I don't have to worry about being overpowered in generally to the wide array of wildlife. Just in this trip we saw several beavers, duck, geese, even a heron. Um, in addition to that, it is incredibly close to where I live, not to mention the lost town lurking below its waters carrying some very interesting and possibly haunted history. Um, and also because it's part of my history. I've been around these waters most of my life, whether it's canoeing with my grandparents, going on a date with my husband when we first got together, um, and even some silly ditch day memories that I absolutely cherished. You're actually gonna see these giant trees that are sticking out of the water in just a little bit. And when I was a teen, they used to be like several feet tall. I'm really bad at estimating that, so I'm not even gonna try. And basically all the teens would climb the tree all the way up to the top and jump down into the water. And it was evidently really dangerous despite the fact that we all did it. So the city actually cut those trees down. And um, it's funny because the fact that you can actually see these stumps right now shows how low the water level is in Arizona and how bad we need some extra rain because when the lake is full, you can't see these at all. So, um, I, but I, I thought that was cool and I wanted to point those out to you too because, I mean, for me just to even see them brings me so much like, you know, little fun joy. Um, so like this was just a fun, absolutely amazing trip for us. This is something that we like to do every year, if not several times. Um, if you are ever in the White Mountains of Arizona, I 100% recommend you checking out Fool's Hollow. And don't forget to let me know what you think. And if you're interested in that haunted history I kind of threw in there earlier, I do have a video that kind of touches on it, but if you guys would like to know more, don't forget to let me know and maybe I can work it into my Halloween fun this year. This is going to be the end of today's episode, but I wanted to take a second first to say thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope that you really enjoyed kind of getting this sneak peek into how I prep and plan for an afternoon on the lake, as well as a little bit of the fun and, you know, getting to kind of come in there with me as well. I hope that you really enjoyed today's video, and more importantly, I hope that you have an absolutely magical day, my friends, and I can't wait to see you next time.